Well, Milamina, of course, is a very invasive and aggressive vine. Grows very quickly, up to six inches in a day, 24 feet in a year. So the potential exists for the vine to grow quickly up our poles and our guy wires, grow up into the electrical power lines and cause an outage. And uh, this infest infestation here at East Rock substation in Norwalk has the potential, if it grew up the power lines, to cause an outage to 5,700 customers between Norwalk and Westport. So uh, we're taking proactive steps to make sure that that doesn't happen. Well, it's kind of an interesting story. Um, I first happened to notice the vine behind our substation here back in 2008. So I went onto the Yukon website and confirmed that it was a uh, mile a minute with Donna Ellis from Yukon and have been working with Donna ever since. Uh, she came out here, took a look at the site and thought that this would be an ideal site to release some of the insect weevils. And uh, we're excited to be a part of that today and um, get the, re the weevils released into the ecosystem so that it can help control uh, the vine and perhaps spread to some surrounding populations. Absolutely, yeah. It's, uh, you know, Mila Minute doesn't have any natural enemies because it's originally from Eastern Asia and China, Japan, Korea, and so on. So this way we're bringing in some of the native insects from China, bringing them into the United States. Uh, exhaustive research has been done on these insects, both in China and Japan. They've studied um, well over 170 different insects, narrowed it down to mile a minute, and determined that this insect feeds exclusively on this mile a minute vine. So it's, it will naturally occur in the ecosystem, and, uh, and uh, I think in time will help suppress the population. It will never eliminate it. Uh, but it will reduce the population of the vine so that it will remain in check and be much less of a problem than what it could be. Well, this is the first location where we've really identified mile a minute on our rights of ways and poles. So we have a proactive vine control program because, of course, many other vines, uh, bittersweet vine, um, <laughs> Um, there's poison ivy, grapevine, and, and so on, cause up to 500 outages to CLMP customers every year. So we have a proactive vine management program where we cut vines along this year 6,000 miles of power lines to greatly reduce that number. Well, we're going to be releasing uh, 500 weevils which are in this container. There's uh, very s small weevils that are specific for mile a minute vine or mile a minute weed sometimes called. They feed only on that plant and we're concerned about mile a minute because it's a non-native invasive species. It's pictured here on my shirt. Um, it's been found in a number of locations in Connecticut and it spreads very fast as the name implies. It's a uh, rapidly growing weed. It kind of tends to grow up and over everything in its path. And uh, many years of testing have been done, and they found that these weevils, which are from the same region of China that mile a minute originates from, uh, will only eat mile a minute weed. They've done a lot of testing for, to see whether it will feed on any other plants, even ones that are closely related to mile a minute. And, and they, they just prefer mile a minute. They, um, and they'll only lay their eggs on this plant, too on it and that's another part of uh, the biological control is the adult weevils will feed on the leaves and they usually go for the um, the growing points the the new shoot tips and then when they lay their eggs on the leaves when the larvae emerge from the eggs they tunnel into the stems and they eat their way up the stems and disrupt uh, water flow in the plant so the the weed tends to wilt after the larvae and uh, tunneled into the stem. We started releasing weevils in 2009 uh, at a number of locations including Greenwich and uh, North Haven and a number of places in southern Litchfield County and northern Fairfield County. Right, yeah, I think we started releasing there in 2010 and uh, there's been absolutely no evidence of them feeding on anything other than mile a minute. They're it, it takes a while. Biological control takes a while. It sounds like a lot of weevils, 500, but they're very, very tiny. 
and any individual weevil is not going to eat very much in its lifetime. And that's what we've been seeing. Um, you know, they, they're not completely eradicating the weed, but they're keeping it in check. You know, they're uh, uh, suppressing it. Eventually, as the populations get bigger, they'll be controlling it more completely, but it'll never be a complete eradication because as the mile a minute population gets so small, the weevil populations will kind of diminish because its food source will be will be uh, lessened. It, it can grow uh, up to 25 feet in a growing season, so it, it kind of climbs up and over other plants and uh, smothers them in some cases. So it's and detrimental. I mean, it's very detrimental to the natural. Right, right. And it's also a real nuisance because uh, you can kind of see on the on the diagram here, it has very short but very sharp prickles or barbs on the stems. And uh, if you try to grab it with your bare hand, it'll it'll hurt because the, the barbs are very sharp. And it, it almost acts like a Velcro. So if you, if you walk through a patch a mile a minute, it just gets stuck to your clothes and it's scratching your arms and everything. It's a real nuisance plant. How did the weed uh, get here? It originally got here, they believe, in the uh, 1930s in York, Pennsylvania, is what is believed. It came from, uh, there, was a, there was a nursery in York, PA, that was importing uh, rhododendrons and other plants from China. And they believe that the seeds from the Mile a Minute came in on the root ball of some of those plants. From China. Right. And so that was like the epicenter of the invasion and it's been spreading from southeastern PA ever since. And it finally reached Connecticut. Uh, first confirmed report was in the year 2000 in Greenwich. You know, the USDA uh, required a lot of testing, feeding trials and that before they approved uh, the release of these weevils. So there had to be federal approval from the USDA and then also each state where these have been released, there has to be approval from the state officials, like in Connecticut, it's the DEP. And uh, Connecticut wasn't the first state. We had the first states were Delaware, Maryland, Pennsylvania, I believe. And they started releasing weevils way back in 2004, I believe it was. So we, we had, Connecticut had a number of years of experience to draw upon from those states. And all the reports from those states were very positive. Um, no indication that they're creating problems on, by feeding on other plants. And there's a good success rate? Pretty good, yeah. Uh, it varies from site to site. Some places within four or five years, they really have the mile a minute population under control. And the, and the, the weed has been um, knocked back severely. Other locations, it takes a little longer.